Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a good starter home in The Sims 4. And basically this tutorial is going to be kind of like a beginner level tutorial. It's gonna be pretty basic, but if you're learning how to build in The Sims for the first time, you're new, or if you've been building forever and just are looking for a couple extra tips, hopefully this build tutorial will help you out in The Sims. So this is the house I'm gonna try and teach you how to build and I'm building in Willow Creek. This is all 100% base game also so if you only have base game then hopefully this will help you out and if you're wondering what qualifies as like a starter home technically it is usually under 20k. It's gonna be a house that your sims can buy right off the bat right at the beginning of your game so that is what we're gonna mean by starter home in the sims. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead and demolish my house using the bulldozer but Button at the top here bulldoze lot and yes see you later goodbye first thing you want to do when you're building your house you can see at the bottom I've got the 20k for our starter home what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and grab the room tool here I find this to be the most helpful wall tool um, as opposed to this one you could kind of just build straight but this one will allow you to build actual rooms I'm gonna go ahead and just build like a rectangle right off the bat this is gonna be what we are gonna base everything off of nice and simple just a rectangle I'm actually gonna copy and paste the same rectangle and put it above so to do that you just click on the room that you want to copy and then press the little copy button right there and I'm gonna put that right on top I am gonna go for two stories here I know we are minding a budget but I'm gonna show you how to make a two-story home cost less what I'm also gonna do I'm gonna build a little deck here so I think I'm gonna just bring that out two squares ahead and I think in the back I'm also gonna go ahead and build a little like back porch or something just a little balcony sometimes I like to make things a little bit more interesting so I'm gonna also just do a little bump out these can go a long way I kind of add these to most of my homes I feel like they just add a little more dimension to your build so it's not so boxy even just a little two by two square like that can go a long way so for now this is what my shell is looking like I think I want to add just a little bit more dimension to the top part so what I'm gonna do is bring my wall in so you can click again on your room and and use these arrows here to adjust the size of the room so I'm gonna bring that back a little bit and then I think I'm gonna use my room tool again and just kind of add one more little front part there so the next thing we're gonna do is roof this thing the roofing in the Sims is really really tricky I think it took me like 20 years to master roofing in the Sims but I'm gonna show you how we can roof this thing this one won't be too hard so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little gabled roof piece here I'm gonna stick that on but I think I'm gonna turn it so I'm using my arrow keys the left and right like bracket things what are they called they're these <laughs> like the gator things in school the greater and the less than those so I'm gonna use those to rotate my roof I'm gonna stick that on top and same as the rooms like the wall pieces you can click on your roof and kind of pull it across like this the Sims 4 definitely made roofing a lot easier than it was in the past so I'm gonna go and pull that all the way across there I'm also going to do the same thing on this side I'm gonna have it facing the same way and I'm just gonna pull it across so that it meets there and it's nice and smooth so that if I click off of it it kind of just is nice and smooth it looks like one piece so we're gonna make sure we've covered every little part there and I'm also going to add another roof piece and use the same button to turn it forward and kind of just put it on like that and I feel like this is gonna add just a little bit of extra dimension for us you could even pull that all the way to the back and it's just gonna make your build look a little more interesting we really honestly could have just left it like this but I kind of just feel like that extra piece makes it look a little better in my opinion and then also what we're gonna do down here I think before when I did this I just stuck another one of these pieces on but maybe we can also do one of these so I can show you something a little bit different so I'm gonna use that roof piece the half gabled roof and you're gonna do the same thing with the arrows pull that all the way across I like to keep it nice and clean and just make sure that it's just the one tile on that roof piece and what you can do sometimes when you use this roof piece you'll want to adjust it this way 
I want to keep a little bit of overhang, but that is personal preference. I feel like it depends on what kind of roof you're doing, but you can adjust with those little arrows there for the overhang basically. And you could also do it this way. So I think I'm going to keep that little piece there. And then for the front, for my patio, I'm going to use this half hipped roof. I'm going to stick it on there, pull it all the way across, and I'm going to use the up and down arrows to adjust it. And I think I am going to pull this one over. So I'm going to pull that across so that there's a little bit of overhang because I'm actually going to delete this wall. You can also adjust your roof in different ways. Like these little balls here, you can use to kind of um, add some curve. You could also use shift C, which I actually just learned this. I just shared this on stream. Shift C will allow you to just adjust those little parts. But this is getting into more of like an advanced roofing tutorial. I think I'm going to leave that for another video, but just know that that is an option if you want. I always like to change my roof paint. I feel like it looks so weird when I just leave it as a default. So I'm going to use this one here. This is the scalloped pine roof. I think this one is my favorite. I really, really like it. And then I also always add roof trim. So if you click on the roof, you can kind of see different options down in the bottom here, but the roof trims will really, really make a difference in your build. I like to use this really thick one. I feel like some people um, prefer maybe like a little bit of a thinner one, but I like that bulky look. I don't know. I just, that's my go-to. And then for my patio, I'm also going to take this base game ladder style fencing, and I'm just going to use the bottom option for my fencing, which will replace the wall that is already there. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that with my fence. And I think I'm also going to put it along the back because we do have that back balcony. So I just changed my, my fencing option to place fences by drawing. And then instead of replacing a wall, you can just draw your fence yourself. Cool. Okay. So now I think it's time to raise this thing up. I do want to put my house on a foundation. So if you click on the house, you can pretty much click on anything, any room. You'll see this little thing in the middle and that is what is going to allow you to bring it up and down. So you don't want to go too high. I prefer to go like a little higher than like the first and second one. So I think I'm going to do about three ticks up and then I also am going to put some columns down to just provide support for my patio. Cool. Okay. So next we can do the foundation paint, which is this bottom button here for the foundations. And I don't know what one I'm going to use. I think I used this one before. So you can just click on that, make it go around and there we are. That is our foundation. Next is stairs. We're going to go ahead. I think I just used these ones before. And one thing I did learn, I actually had a few videos where I didn't do this is you can just kind of place your stairs automatically. So if you just kind of place it like that, it'll have that little part at the beginning, like that little one tile of just flooring, I guess. So if you don't want that, you can move it using the move button and just kind of like squeeze it in and then you won't have that like extra flooring part. And then same thing as your walls, you can adjust the length of your stairs if you want. So I think I'm going to go over two. Are you noticing a pattern here? There's a lot of arrows you can kind of pull and um, adjust as you want. And don't forget to put your railings. This is something I forget literally all the time. So we've got our railing there. Our house is coming together. I think the next thing we're going to do is wallpaper. So I'm going to go click on the wallpaper tool down here and I do want siding on this. So since we are doing a starter, I'm going to try and keep it pretty cheap. I'm using this one. This is for simoleons. So I'm going to put that on my house. And what you do to make this easier, if you hold shift, it will apply to the entire wall there as opposed to kind of just taking it and going all the way across. I mean, you can do that, but it kind of gets a little bit tedious and you're kind of more likely to make mistakes too. So what I like to do is just hold shift and it'll apply to the entire wall that you are trying to do. Don't forget to do the roofing pieces. I feel like I always forget to do that. And even like under that little piece there, sometimes I forget to do that too, but that is going to be the basic. So I like to kind of just cover the entire house with one. And then if you want, you can go in with a little bit more of a pattern. So I like to use brick as like my bump outs. So I'm going to go back over any little parts that are kind of like sticking out. And this is what I'm talking about under here. Just that little spot. I always forget. So you might end up kind of just playing around with that a little bit. I ended up just putting it on that side piece there and also right in this little section. So now we're going to do windows and doors. And I feel like this is one of my favorite parts to do. So let's find a door that's going to match here. And I think I'm going to scroll around. I want to keep in mind that because it's a starter, we don't want to go too crazy. I think I like this one. So I'm going to choose this as my door. One thing I also find really, really helpful, especially if you're looking for like a color palette or something is using these little filters 
over here. So at the bottom right, there's this filter items button. And on here, I'm just gonna select base game because the only items I wanna see are from base game today. You can also choose if you have custom content available, you could choose that under the content section. The styles one, we're not really gonna worry about, but the color one, if you have a color palette you're going for, which I tend to do a lot, you can just pick the colors that you wanna see and those are the only things that'll show up in the menu. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do the base game filter and what I like to do for my little top part here is use a window like this, but if the object is showing up red like that, you need to put in a cheat if you want it to work, which is bb.moveobjects on. And to pull up this menu up here, this is the cheat bar, this is where you put in all of your cheats. It's just going to be control shift C, holding all three of those on your keyboard, and then bb.moveobjects on, enter. And then you'll see that your move objects cheat is on. I'm gonna show you a couple of these, but that is like the main one. And then you'll be able to see that the objects that you weren't able to place before, you can now kind of place wherever you want. Now this can be helpful. Sometimes the move objects cheat can kind of hinder you if you're trying to go for functionality and you don't really know how to do that. But for the purposes of the build today, we're gonna be using the move objects cheat. Another thing that you can do to make placing objects a little bit more easier is you can see how my window is kind of just clipping to like a grid. If you don't want that to happen now with the new window update, you can hold alt on your keyboard and then you can move the window around freely, same as the door and same as pretty much every object that you're gonna be using in The Sims. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish up my windows here and then we're gonna start doing the landscaping. Landscaping is something you guys ask me about all the time too. So I'm hoping that a landscaping mini tutorial will help you out a little bit. <laughs> so now we've got all the basics on our house. We've got the windows, we've got the doors. You could just leave it at this point, but I like to make my houses look a lot better using landscaping, detailing, things like that. So first thing we're gonna do is put our flooring at the front door and I'm gonna use this basic hardwood here. And then same thing as we did earlier with the wallpaper, you can hold shift on your keyboard to apply to an entire room and this is so helpful for flooring. So I'm gonna do that for my deck up top. I also made this little back door here so I'm going to apply that there and that is it for our flooring for the outside. Next, what I'm gonna show you is something that I did not do for years and years and that is using terrain paint, especially when you're doing a cheaper build or a starter home in The Sims. This is all free so it adds detailing that doesn't cost anything and makes a huge difference. So what you're gonna do, down here we've got obviously all of our options for terrain paint. You can do grass, you can do dirt, you can do pavement um, is a good way to save money as opposed to using tile that costs money. And then there are other things like sand if you're building in Sulani, etc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and use this swatch here. I use this pretty much on every single build that I do. And you can adjust your paintbrush size. I think I'm gonna go for the second to biggest one. And you can also adjust the softness. I like to turn mine up quite a bit because I find if it's even in the middle where like the default is, you don't have as much control. So I turned mine almost all the way up and what you're gonna do is just go along the base of your house. Literally just follow along the entire thing and once we do the landscaping, this is gonna make it look a lot more natural and just um, the way that it would be like in real life, I guess. So literally just go around your entire house like that and then I like to bring it out. This is gonna be our little pathway. And then you can go on top of that using one of these. I'm gonna use this one. I kinda like the look of this one and I like to just go on top of the dirt you don't really have to do that, but I kind of feel like it blends it a little bit better and that's all we're gonna do for terrain paint. Another tip that I'm gonna give you if you're doing a starter home or a budget build in The Sims is we're gonna open up that cheat menu again, that control shift C on the keyboard, and then you're gonna type bb.show live edit objects. This is going to open up a whole new menu of things that are completely free and what you're gonna do now is go into your search bar and type in debug and this is gonna bring up all of the debug plants. There's another debug cheat but I like to do this one first because it's only gonna bring up the plants and the landscaping things that we're gonna need before we go in the house. Now you can take all of these things, these details that are gonna be free and I'm realizing I forgot some windows on the side of my house. There, okay. 
Anyway, <laughs> I'm kind of just gonna use this stuff, make it look pretty, adding some vines going up the side of the house. You might have to do a little bit of searching because it's not actually filtered properly unless you download like a mod. But if you're just doing this for the first time, finding objects is a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna go back in and use my base game filter, hope that that's gonna help me. Yeah, okay, cool. So what I like to do when I'm landscaping in The Sims is generally put trees in my corners. I like to put bigger trees in the back so they're not covering up my house. And sometimes you're gonna have to turn it around. So how I'm spinning this like this is again, holding that alt button that we were talking about earlier and clicking on it. And while you hold alt, you can kind of rotate it as you want as opposed to not holding alt. And then it doesn't really um, rotate the way you want it to. So holding alt will help you with the rotation so that your tree isn't like clipping into the side of your house, which happens quite a bit. For this case, I think I'm only gonna do two trees, one there and one in the back. I think that's gonna be good enough for this lot. And what I like to do also is scroll out. You'll hear me talk about this in a lot of my videos. Scroll out and look around at the landscaping around you. And then I'll try and match like some of the trees that are back there. Like you can see this tree is back there. I'll also look at like what kind of shrubs are around and try and match that. It depends where you're building obviously, but yeah, that is a, a big tip that I like to give to people. When they ask me how to landscape, I'm just gonna take all of these little, you know, flowers, kind of stick them in, just make them look kind of pretty. Again, holding alt so that they place where I want them to. You definitely don't have to open up the debug landscaping if you don't want to, or if you're not really worrying about a budget, but landscaping can really, really rack up. It can get pretty pricey. So I, I like to do this if I'm trying to keep to a budget because it doesn't add anything and you can kind of just go crazy with it. Another tip that I like to give when I'm landscaping is picking only a few plants and kind of just rolling with those. If you go too overboard, unless like you're going for a very wild kind of look, if you go too overboard with your plants, it's gonna look kind of weird. So just kind of picture it as if you've gone to the store and bought a pack of flowers and you know, it only came with a few of them and those are the only ones that you're able to plant. So you can see like the only actual plants that I'm using here are this one, this one, and this one. And then I kind of just go in with like some blendy like default plants like this and I find that kind of brings everything together a little bit. Also, hedges. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. Hedges will save your life. Okay, so I'm gonna cool it on the landscaping. We're done with that. Speaking of details, another thing that I like to do is go back into my build mode here and grab some trim. So these are frises, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and exterior trims. This will make a huge difference on your home. So I'm gonna go around with this trim. I feel like it just kind of adds like a, a more clean look. It's a very minor detail, but little things like this, I feel like, can make your build and make a huge difference. One thing that I forget literally all the time is mailboxes. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our mailbox. These are zero dollars, but you need them in The Sims. So we've got that. Another thing you're gonna need out front of your house is always gonna be a trash can. So we've got our trash can, we've got our mailbox. Those are pretty much the basics that we definitely, definitely need. I think I'm gonna fence around this thing. So I'm gonna go use my eyedropper tool up top here and click on my fence and kind of just build around it. Uh, when I built this earlier, I didn't really put much in the backyard just because I kind of ran out of money. So I'm just gonna not really use the full lot. And I think I'm actually going to just bring it up here too, just so that it's kind of like fenced in, but not quite, <laughs> not enough to break the bank, you know? So there we go. And last thing I'm going to do is the lighting outside. So what you can do, what I like to do um, a lot is up here, you'll see the like sunshine button. This means that we're looking at the house in morning. So I just like to switch that over to nighttime. And then we're gonna go find our lights down in the menu here. And I like to use these ones when I'm going base game. So we're gonna use those. And I'm just gonna kind of light up the house. I'm just gonna kind of stick these in the bushes, wherever, maybe even in the back here, just to kind of like brighten things up a bit. And that's all we're gonna do for now. I think I'm gonna leave that as my lighting. Obviously, we don't have any lighting inside the actual house yet. So it's gonna make a big difference. I think one final thing I'm gonna do while we're still outside, we are gonna go and use these things. I love to put these on my windows. I feel like they just add some nice aesthetic here. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like stick those around. Maybe just three, cause they are expensive. Those are like $140. Cool, now I think we're done. I think we're done. I'm gonna move in the house. We're gonna make our layout, which can be really confusing also. So let's go in. So now that we're in the house, you can see there's probably gonna be walls in 
places that you don't want them to be. So we're gonna go into the wall tool, the basic one. You can also use B on your keyboard, by the way, if you wanna just quickly use that if you're a hotkey kind of person. I am not. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold control and this is going to allow me to delete walls. So if you're just gonna put one across like that, that is how you place one down and to delete it, hold control. Another way you can delete walls, which I find way more fun, is using the sledgehammer tool or using K on your keyboard and just kind of deleting them one by one. You can also kind of hold and delete them this way. That can get a little bit difficult if you're deleting a lot because sometimes it'll connect to other things, but I find that to be a little bit more of a fun way to do it. So, I mean, to each their own, but let's go ahead and build our layout here. So, one thing that I always forget lately, I don't know if this is just me, is my bathroom. So what I'm gonna do is build one right here and you can see we've got that issue with the window where it's cutting. Not the biggest deal, but if you don't want that, you can just kind of use Alt and move it out of the way. Some people like to do their windows after doing the layout. If that's what you wanna do, then by all means do it. But I kinda like to just place them before I go in, just the way that I like to do it. Um, That is gonna be my layout for the bottom. That's it. I'm gonna keep open concept, living room and kitchen. The only thing I'm gonna barrier off is the bathroom there. And what I like to do also, you can choose to do this first because sometimes that'll help you out. But I'm gonna place my stairs right away before I do anything else. And I'm just gonna stick those right on over there. My window is clipping here, as you can see. So again, just kinda like, squeeze that over. You can adjust, play around if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it. And then upstairs, using the button up here, the page up button, we are going to build a wall and this is gonna be our bedroom and I think that's gonna be about it for my layout. We still have 10,000 simoleons left and since this is a two-story, I find if you make it more narrow, then you're gonna have a lot more money to play with. So it looks big on the outside, but inside, this is only a one bedroom with the two floors. Because it's so narrow, I feel like we were able to kind of pull that off. So let's go inside, start uh, with the lighting. So once I've got my layout down, the next thing I like to do is get my lighting. And these tend to be like everyone's go-to. So what I like to do is kind of just place them down and you can turn your grid back on using G if you want to. Um, I'm gonna keep mine off, but I like to put these lights in the corners kind of the way that they would be like in real life. So I'm gonna put them like that. And then upstairs, I think I'm just gonna put one right in the center for that room and since I am trying to save money, what you can do is maybe just in the two corners um, if that's gonna provide enough light or in the center like that one if you have small enough of a room. And before we forget, we're gonna go back in and get our fencing for our railing. Cool, okay, done. You might get this little glitch, it's very annoying, um, but we're just gonna ignore that for right now. I'm also going to do my doors before we do any flooring and I think I'm gonna match the front door and kind of use this one there. So I'm gonna use my door for right there and my door for my bedroom and that's about it. So let's go back downstairs and grab some flooring. I think I used just like some hardwood before. So I'm gonna stick that in there. For my bathroom, we're gonna use some of that tile there. Again, sticking with the $4 in our price range for flooring. And then for my wallpaper, I think I'm gonna go with a gray. So again, holding shift to apply to the entire room. And what you're gonna have to do, because unfortunately it doesn't clip to the stairs automatically, is just make sure you get that little part so that we don't have the weird like siding on the side of it. <laughs> Since I used trim for my paint around here, I'm gonna use that pretty much everywhere. So for my hallway upstairs, I'm gonna bring that up with the eyedropper tool and pretty much use the same. For my hallways, I kind of like to keep it consistent with the same flooring and wallpaper that I've used downstairs. And then I think all I'm gonna do for my bedroom is just maybe change up the swatch. We will just go with that. All right, we're gonna move on. Let's start furnishing. $9,000 is what we've got left. I'm gonna go into the room, the objects by room, and we are gonna get the cheapest base game fridge that we possibly can. <laughs> Once again, using that base game filter to help us out. And I'm gonna grab a counter that we think is gonna look good. So let's try this one. So what you can do, obviously you can change the swatch in here. I'm going to just put those along like that. Using the cheapest oven possible again, and we're 
we're gonna use our cabinets up top. This is something actually that I learned recently also. So if you click on the cabinets, it's just gonna show up as these like box ones, but that might not work if you're trying to build above like a fridge or something. So there is this like very, very easily mistakable button that you like literally can't even see, but it is there. You can click up here and that is gonna bring you out to all of these other options. So I'm gonna use this one above there and I'm also gonna use it above my fridge. And then I'm gonna go back and grab just my square one and place it right in there. And what I'm also gonna do is there's this option for these ones. I'm gonna stick that right in there as just like a bigger cabinet option, I guess. I don't know, that's just gonna go in there. And then for my dining room, we're gonna grab a table. I like to use this one. I feel like that's my favorite one. So again, holding alt to place it wherever I want to. And then we're gonna go and grab our chairs and just kind of like stick them on there. Cool, okay, I personally have like three places that always have rugs. The dining room table is one of them. Again, this is a preference thing, but I feel like it pulls together that space a little bit, especially when you're doing like open concept like this. So I'm gonna grab one that hopefully will fit. I think I'm gonna use this one and since I think it's a little bit too big for my table, what you can do is shrink it. So holding on to the rug still, you can use the bracket keys and that will make the rug bigger or smaller. And this is so helpful for rugs, especially. So I've shrunk that down. I'm gonna just place it so that it kind of fits in the center of my table. There we go, done. So we do have our essentials here. Actually, no, we don't. We need a, we need a, a fire thing. <laughs> We're gonna need a fire alarm. Do not forget this because then your Sims might die. I'm going to leave it like that for now, but we are not going to leave it like that at the end. So I'm gonna spin around and do my living room, which is gonna go over here. So I'm gonna grab my couch. Again, keeping in mind my price range here, I'm trying not to break the bank. <laughs> so going for cheaper items, which obviously like as you go, you can upgrade these uh, as you're playing later, but we're gonna just kind of get these. Another way you can change your swatch is with this button up here, the design tool or R on your keyboard. <laughs> and I'm gonna use that TV. Um, $1,400 is quite a bit for right now but another way that we can kind of pull this together do I like this I don't e I don't even know anymore <laughs> okay whatever we're gonna go like that and then this is the second place that I always like to use a rug so I'm gonna use this one because again when you're doing like an open concept kind of build I feel like that will help pull the room together a little bit so I think that's gonna be it for my room for right now the last thing that I'm gonna do is place a bookshelf which when you're just starting out in the Sims is so helpful because because your Sims are gonna learn and read these books to get their skills up for the careers and stuff. So always make sure you've got a bookshelf in your starter home. Now that we have the essentials down, we can go back into my kitchen and decorate. Since I've already built this house, I know how much money that I have to play with, but if you're worried about breaking the bank, you can choose to do this last to make sure that you've got your essentials like your bathroom and all of that stuff before you start decorating. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna kind of pull this together with a beautiful plant, which by the way, if you don't know, plants will pull together your builds like you wouldn't believe. So definitely take advantage of those plants. Oh, and also don't forget your sink. <laughs> oh God, what am I doing? Okay, moving along. I'm also gonna just save my window, okay. I swear I'm not awful at this. Let's go and do our bathroom. Obviously in our bathroom, we're gonna be grabbing a toilet. We're gonna be grabbing our sink. I personally prefer to put bathtubs in my bed even though like I don't even have a bath in real life, but um, I'm gonna put a bathtub right there and this is pretty much all you need for the bathroom unless you wanna add a little mirror maybe. Normally when I'm decorating like on a normal day, I will add toilet paper and you know, the good stuff, but this toilet paper is 50 simoleons and I don't know if we're gonna have that left over, so I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's go upstairs. Another thing I like to do if you have like a hallway or something is add a skill item for your Sims. This can pretty much be anything depending on what you want, but I'm just gonna stick a little easel in there and maybe like an end table to kind of just make this look a little bit less boring. <laughs> cool, and again, I'm just gonna like stick a little plant on there and move on. Next, we're gonna do our bedroom. So I'm gonna grab my 
bed, the cheapest like double bed we can get. By the way, if you're new here and my dog is snoring loudly, I'm very sorry about it. She's sick though, so I'm not waking her up. But let's do the bed. Oh, we've got our bed there. Let's grab a cute little dresser, done. I'm gonna just stick maybe a little mirror above there. We can grab possibly like this one, put it in the corner. You can see we're coming down to the wire also, so I'm really keeping an eye on my budget at the moment. I always like to do two end tables by my bed. I don't know, I've always done this. I feel like it looks kind of cool. So we're gonna put those there. Again, holding alt to make sure that they're nice and cozy over there. What I am noticing and what I like to do in my builds a lot is change the vibe uh, with lighting. So I like my bedrooms to be a little more cozy. So I'm actually gonna delete the big ceiling light we had and replace it with this little lamp here. I think I might also do it downstairs. We can save money by deleting a light, so why not? And then again, what you can do and what I do all the time is switch it to nighttime to make sure that it's not too dark. The third place that I was talking about where I always put my rugs is under the bed. So for this particular bedroom, I think I'm just gonna take a spot rug here and size it up again using the bracket and then just kind of like place that under there. I feel like if I could get it centered, then this would be ideal and look kind of good. And honestly, we could leave it there. I have 452 simoleons left. I think I'm gonna add maybe a couple chairs out on my balcony. I think it really depends how much money you wanna start your sims off with. I tend to go kind of crazy with the build items. So my sims be starting with like $2 half the time. And right after I added that little end table there, now we are sitting at 77 simoleons. So I think I'm gonna stop. There we are. That is our starter home build tutorial in The Sims 4. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I was able to teach you something properly. I hope. <laughs> I hope this wasn't too confusing. But um, let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section down below. I kind of want to do a series like this. This obviously was how to build a starter home in The Sims 4, but maybe we could do like how to build a uh, Victorian style home or how to build a mansion in The Sims 4, etc. So let me know also if that's something you are interested in. We could turn this into like a tutorial series. But yeah, I will put this on the gallery under Sydney Macaretta. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.